Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Today I'm unboxing a very cool solitaire game called Halls of Hegra from a great little company that we've enjoyed their games quite a bit, Tompet Games. They are a Norwegian company and this game tells the story, a very heroic and tragic story of Norwegian defenders during the early stages of World War II, I think in 1940, uh, holding off a, a German advance uh, near the town of Hegra. Ultimately, these, uh, were there 200 of them, I think, give or take, these soldiers hold up in an old, probably a World War I fortress, and for 25 days, they were able to hold out before they had to surrender. And the, the game, Alexander played this game and did a preview video for the video for the Kickstarter campaign like 18 months ago or two years ago. So I didn't play it, but I've got the final copy and I'm going to play it because I'm very excited. But I, I know they ultimately had to surrender the historical events like 25 days. The game, I think, covers about 11 of those 25 days. I, I think it would have been cool if they'd have done the whole 25, but... That might have been a six-hour game. But this is kind of a worker placement, and it has a lot of little systems, like little subsystems. We'll show you, I'll, I'll kind of show you the way the board lays out and all the little things that go around it. It's a very involved-looking game, but it looks really great. I know Alexander was very fond of it. Um, the game is de designed by Peter Schenke Olsen, very Norwegian name. The game plays in about 90 minutes. It says 70 to 90. Alexander said it is a little bit longer than that. It is a solo war game. Uh, once again, Tom Peck Games. Graphic design by Thomas Lee. Not going to butcher that name. G-J-E-S-E-E-T-H. And then development by David Turksey. You know who David Turksey is. He's done several very cool Euro-style games, and they partnered with him on this. Here's a look at that board that I was telling you. We'll look at this, but you've got the game board in the upper right. Then you've got all these little ancillary boards, like your board that tracks the uh, your infantry and your supplies and the weather and conditions that are going on. Do you have cards? You're going to draw an event every turn. There's just a lot of activity and a lot of things that are uh, that are going on. And frankly, this is a really nice production. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to increase the height of my camera just slightly. Uh, very nice production. I feel like the components are really, really good. The first thing that you uh, obviously are uh, met by here is the rule book. Uh, kind of a cool little rule book. It's not a traditional huge rule book. There's 32 pages in the game. The player aid is on the back. I don't know if they have any other player aids. And then there are a bunch of designer notes and historical notes talking about this valiant siege, uh, them holding out, mobilization of the town and the different uh, uh, volunteers, the siege, etc. And then uh, it goes into the rules. There are advanced event cards. My guess is that makes the game even harder, but I, I haven't necessarily uh, looked at those. But here are the rules. Great color examples, fairly large text, Nothing that is too dense or too uh, deep, um, but you're going to have to, to read through a lot of things and because there's a lot of aspects to the game. Here's a look at some of, remember I mentioned like little systems? I think this is one of the things if you've dug out, yep, only available if you dug out the snow. And one of the one of your biggest opponents in this game is going to be the Norwegian weather. So it it will snow a lot. It reduces your movement as you try to move around. You have to dig the fortress out, and you're going to find little pieces of equipment like a field telephone. I think there's like a medicine chest. We'll look at some of the other things, ammunition, those kind of things. But you're going to track those around the board. Um, you're going to try to get. You're going to forage and hunt, and your morale is a big aspect of the game. There are damage tiles as the fortress takes damage. I think the Luftwaffe dropped like 2,500 bombs or something on the fortress trying to uh, trying to get them out. There are bags that you're going to build. Here you see you've got a hit bag, and you've got a recruit bag, and 
Uh, you've got a patrol bag. So those are very cool elements. Uh, and, and you're going to be you're going to be building those bags, making them better. Some cases, making them worse. And uh, there's a lot of great little tokens and elements. I think the production looks really good. There's German infantry meeples there, air tiles, artillery pieces, the different bags. So there you go. That's the rules. There's a look at those cloth bags, and they're kind of like a velvet. Um, my, my concern with these bags is I can't fit my fat fingers in there, so I wish they would have been a little bigger, but you can put those elements in and then draw that string to keep them all inside. Here, uh, we'll look at some of these counters. These are those different elements that I talked to you about as you dig the fortress out, you're going to find, like you dig out the map room, and this is going to give you an advantage. You Counter patrol, new supplies... A field telephone, radio, medicine cabinet, gun, hidden tools. These are things that you're going to dig out. And these are obviously they're going to be placed on the board. As you dig them out, you're going to be like, oh, oh, great. I got gun number two. So very cool. Um, they're very thick, nice little tiles. So they're going to stand up well. I feel like this is a game that I'm going to play a bunch once I get it down. Then there's a whole bunch of counters. Most of them are round counters representing the track and paths of the German forces as they're assaulting you. Um, these are the things that you're building in your bag, the misses. These are misses as well here. Uh, they represent different things that are going on, guns and attacks and uh, the air flights. So there's a bunch of great little double-sided counters as well. Here is one of the little boards this says first attack, and you can see it kind of, that represents, I believe it's the first attack of the Germans onto the fort. So it's going to tell you how to do that. And then here it has, okay, so this is mobilization. That's the other thing I want to say about the game. It looks like it has like three different phases or evolutions of the game itself. There's like a mobilization phase, a preparation phase, and then there's the siege phases. So you're going to open new supply routes. You're going to negotiate. Your fear and doubt are going to go up and down. There can be coups. It looks like your men may be infighting. Uh, and then you're going to go over here on the other side of the board um, for those attacks. Here's a look at the big main game board. Uh, it's a hard-mounted map board, and it's pretty big and solid. Let's go ahead and try to get that open. I'm not having any luck, but it's very thick. And very well done. So there you go. I, I think you can get mostly a look at it. Let me raise the camera just a little because that's a big one. Um, up here, this area represents kind of the outside of the fortress as these uh, German markers will be advancing along these tracks and building up to where they attack you. Uh, you've got different administrative boxes where you're tracking you know, you got your turn track down here at the very bottom, right here you can see where your uh, your cards are going to go out to the side of the board. This is tracking the German uh, infantry as they attack, defending the walls, just a lot of different tracks and boxes. And then these are kind of little aids as well. They tell you like, here's some modifiers you're going to get for morale and the morale track. And it, it, this game is designed to try and help you as you play the game. A um, bunch of very cool wooden pieces, right? We're gonna, and I'm not sure if these replace, these round ones, if these replace some of these round tokens, I'll have to read that. But you can see there's a bunch of those. That's obviously medicine or first aid, ammunition. Green is maybe strength. I'm not sure what the blue is. There's purple in there. But here I wanted to show you these little German uh, infantry, so you can see, it's hard to see because they're black, Here, I'll put it up against my hand, there you go, but there's a bunch of those, those are going in these spaces uh, on the board, and I think that's how many guys you'll have to attack and fight, there's a bunch of them there, here you just have general, uh, these are guns, these other ones represent, I think, guns, so yeah, I think these do represent or take the place of the counters, which is really kind of nice. 
and then you've got a bunch of little square cubes that you're going to use. This is a Euro game, so it's got it's got some of those things. It comes with a small bag of dice. There are five six siders. I uh, don't know if you're ever going to need more than that necessarily. I might try to look uh, online for some Norwegian army dice. That might be kind of cool. I already have some German dice, so maybe when they roll their attacks, I'll I'll maybe roll those. Um, but here are the cards. These say high morale. This says low morale. Not sure. These might be events that happen when those hit, when you hit those areas. Very great art. Love the art. Um, there are missions that you're trying to accomplish to, to find things. These are used during the last stand phase as they are attacking and coming in. These cards are the siege cards. So let's look at a couple of those siege cards just to see what they do. So this is siege number two. It says move all patients in the infirmary. The infirmary is right here in the middle of the board. You can see the, um, the medical symbols and the beds. So it says move all patients in the infirmary one level down. I don't know if that's getting closer to being in bad shape. Uh, not sure it references these things on the side. There is weather. There's a weather determination part of this game. I don't know that I showed you that um, on the board. But then it, it talks about units down here. I don't know if those units come on or that's the ones that are going to attack. So, yeah, there's a lot of different cards. And you can see there's a lot of different choices for that one siege deck. There's about 12 cards here. So you're going to have some options and some choice. These are Siege 1. Once again, look at that great art. And that's really a great thing because th those are different. They could have very easily done the same art for those cards. This is First Attack. Really like that picture. Mobilization. So that's during that first phase where you're kind of building up. So let's see what it says. This is a sun. There, there can be sunny weather. Add two German markers. You must move the fear marker one level up. So these are just negative events that are happening. But yeah, these are great looking cards. Very excited about that. Um, very cool. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I'm very, very excited about playing this game. This is a game that I have uh, been interested in since hearing about it a couple of years ago when Alexander ultimately did the... Uh, the preview video. I didn't get to play it, but now that it's been produced, I had requested a copy. They kindly mailed me this copy. I'm going to play it and I'm going to uh, hopefully, I, I would love to do a playthrough, uh, but I'm, I, I'll have to get comfortable with it before I do that. So that's a look at Halls of Hegra, the final production copy from Tompet Games. Very cool historical situation. Great little setup. Very good components, cards, wooden pieces, dice. Just a great overall, uh, well-produced game that looks really good. And I'm very excited to play this one. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys uh, checking in. And I've been Grant for The Player's Aid.